Yep. I knew it. I knew the second... The, the second I was not going to be concerned with Twitch, uh, with Streamlabs OBS dropping me, it does. What fun. Alright, so as I was saying, thank you, Ronin of Death. Thank you, Sam Mario, for your resubs. Especially Ronin of Death for your, uh... Wait. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Anyway, hopefully I'm streaming. OBS tells me I am. So I'm going to go ahead and wait a quick minute for OBS to sort itself out. And then I'll go ahead and plop us back in uh, where we found ourselves last time. Defending Natsume from the most biased trial ever. Okay, I got people seeing me, hearing me. Let's go ahead and load it. I have considered the defense counsel's request for a further summation examination of the jury. And I have determined that the court must uphold the defense's judicial right to this procedure. So, counsel, you will now proceed with your second summation examination. The alliteration on that's always fun. I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman? We are, my lord. Very good. In that case, I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court what you want for Christmas. Oh, oh the grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of this crime. Oh, and City's Productions, thank you for the 13-month, uh, 17-month resub. This feels like it's been a while since I've seen you. I hope you're doing well, too. The accused left behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books of his. If there were some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I might reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? <sighs> you are now implicated in this case. Why are you still a juror? Ugh. Alright, remember she has like a deep, deep, almost like Ursula voice. Deary me, it was only a little book. Hardly life-threatening, even with a direct hit. Look, I just want to get this over with. If I don't bring some home, home some pay tonight, I'll be in a tidy bit of trouble. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. It, it gave me the sneezes. Hmm, yes. Considerably more tangible arguments from all members of the jury this time around, it seems. Does it? Does it really? With one notable exception, of course. My learned student friend was, un was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. <laughs> so the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And moreover... That is gonna... You're gonna burn the Bailey down! No one else was even at the scene to commit the crime! Except the two witnesses. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the conclusion is somewhat set in stone. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means, I'm afraid, that during the summation examination, it's essential that you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? What would even constitute a tangible explanation here? Isn't it obvious? Who stabbed the woman and how? Woman. Those two details is all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attack was conducted. 
And there I was thinking this might be hard. But Mr. Norhoto, you do... You have to do it, otherwise the, this really will be where the trial ends. Ugh. No pressure, then. That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with the summation examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel? Oh, oh yes, my lord. Right, Ryanosuke, focus your, focus your mind now. Slap those cheeks! I like the little warble the lips give when they when he smacks himself. Just a little attention to detail. Whoops. Hit space too soon. <sighs> Clearly the key to this summation examination is going to be juror number four, the maid. Or should I say, Mrs. Garadab. When can I move for a mistrial? We have a book that disappeared from the Garadev's house on the evening of the incident. And the fourth book found in the victim's hand. There must be a way to link the two. Yes, that's what we have to find. Using every technique I've learned in my short career so far. Whatever it takes! Don't forget to keep an eye on Mrs. Garadev and see how she reacts, even to things other people say. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll come back to you. Well, obviously, let's start with this. But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? With the flames of love, I'll have you know. There's really no such thing as a loving incendiary... Is a loving incendiary bomb. I don't know. Well, he brought it upon himself. He's playing with fire to betray with fiery love. Isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is certainly a bad thing, yes. But I think the argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mrs. Garadab. Never you mind that! The point is, we're just having a jovial little dispute, nothing more! Poor juror number five. And I won't have any more suggestions that it was anything whatsoever to do with this crime! Right, well, we'll see about that. But what about juror number five? He doesn't seem to be turning a hair at Mrs. Garadev's relentless onslaughts. It's almost as though he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is. Oh, guess who I'm pressing next? The guy who still doesn't want to actually state anything relevant to the case. Hold it. Wait, Cychronia, as far as I remember, the on only one mistrial happens in the series, and it's for reasons more extreme than five six of the jury shouldn't be here. Yikes, did someone kill the judge? You just want to get the you want to get this over with? How can you sit there and say something like that? A man's future is at stake here. Well, him and me both then, like I said before. What? I told you already, I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home some readies with me tonight. Is it readies or readies? Eh. You'll find me floating face down the Thames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me. My missus ain't one to mess about, you know. She can be fierce, believe you me. Another shining example of marital bliss, then. A situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Do you know that it's, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It was too frightening. That's the thing. I must have blocked it out. Helpful. I wonder if Mr. Beat will be dragged into the Thames by his scarf. Don't even go there, Miss Suzato. There must be some way to jog his memory about this.
Well, that's a similar incident, isn't it? Does, does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culpability in this case? Sorry, what's that? You'll have to speak up, lad. Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter. My grandchildren baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. And I had, it had 75 candles on top of it, dude. What a sight to behold it was. You put candles on a cake? Was it some kind of devil worship? Of course not, it was an angel cake! To celebrate my birthday, obviously! It seems that a common custom here in- It seems that that's a common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Narhoto. Anyway, I mustered all my puff to blow them out! Only I must have blown wrong somehow. The flames didn't go out. The candles went flying all over the room. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Lost all my grandkids, I did. Definitely sounds like devil worship to me. And by the sneezes, I presume you mean a cold. But how would you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was. The grandchildren blessed them. Oh, okay, well threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. And then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open all the windows to clear it. The windows? The biting winter air rushed over me like a devil dancing on my grave it did. I caught a terrible cold from it. They put me in the hospital for a while. I won't forget a birthday in a hurry. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. Yeah, he caused the Great London Fire. <laughs> Burned down Parliament. I knew it was devil worship all along. But something about this old man's story is playing on my mind for some reason. We need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Natsume, could have attacked the young woman in the, on the street. As well, uh, as well as how he or she could have done it. Yes, but once again, the juror's statements are full of personal prejudice. Seriously. <laughs> Allow them to be convinced they're right, even in the face of logical arguments to the contrary. I think you're going to have to pit them against each other to force them to accept an alternative explanation. <gasps> you mean the thing I've been doing twice now? <sighs> yes. I don't necessarily need to find contradictions between their assertions. Just a connection might do the trick. Alright, I'll see what I can do. If anything stands out, I'll go in for the strike. That's the spirit? Uh, so given what he was saying about the fire and the window, it feels like we have... But he didn't alter his statement. Did he? No, hold on. Oh, okay, so he did. Then there we go. Juror number six and juror number three. Those two, these two juror statements clearly contradict one another. They do? How exactly, counsel? Don't point that at me again. I told you it wasn't me. Hmm. What's that you say? Speak up, lad. Speak up. Juror number three. Do you see? Oh, me? I you see, see what, sir? Did you hear juror number six's account of his birthday celebrations last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... Oh! Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garadev household. And Mr. Garadev had the following to say about it. The whole place filled up with smoke. Oh, my. oh, hello. Why are you pouring tea? Excuse me. Drawer number four. Do you have something to say about that? Mrs. Garadab! Oh, dearie me! 
What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense now. What? What is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? What? I, I beg your pardon? What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window. Which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a justly deserved book battering. Even though your house was on fire? Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Of course. I should have realized. That's a significant that's a significant step forward, Mr. Narhodo. You've managed to establish that the window was open. We simply must have that added to Mrs. Garadev's formal statement. Now that you mentioned it, yes, the window was open at the time. I've clean forgotten, it's true. Okay, well see, now do we have to pit you against your number three? And your number three and number six didn't change their votes. Uh, well, I can't go back. So he changed his mind. But now she said it. No, apparent. Well, that doesn't seem to be enough because we've already gotten that far. Press whatever. Now nothing's else changed. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Garadeb told us he had been reading. Well, I couldn't really say. On the day in question, did you or did you not throw at your husband the copy of The Lion's Pride that he had been reading? I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it at him. And now you come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the outset? Because I couldn't, you insolent little man, I didn't remember! At times like that, you pick up and throw whatever you can lay your hands on, you, as you well know. I really don't. I barely noticed I was throwing a book, let's just the title of it. Uh, okay, hold on. We've got something else to go on here. Excuse me. What is it, juror number five? You know something? I I remember what it was. That memory I blocked out. Ah. It was listening to this, what this granny was saying. Brought it all flooding back. Who are you calling a granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Mrs. Garadeb or the maid, I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. It, it was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home after work like. I put my hand in my pocket for the wages I just earned that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole. Every last penny had dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? 
the wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. I, I could hardly get the words out, but I, but I told her straight. I've lost the day's wages, love. Next thing I knew, the blade was whistling past my ear! Stuck into the wall next to me it did, about an inch deep. No words, just terror. I could smell it then, you know. The good, uh, the god-awful stench of the Thames and whatever was running between my legs. I was sure I was gonna face down in the muddy banks that night, I can tell you. Now, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. When women lose their rag, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatchets, hammers, you name it. Mr. Naruto, you mustn't think that all women are so short-tempered and unrefined. Oh, no, no, I wasn't thinking that. Throwing household objects at people is... Well, it's so uncivilized. At least attack with honor, using a bow or the like. What? Attack? Who are you going to attack? Never mind. Anyway, this man's words could be rather significant, I think. All right, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare. So now we bring. Well, now we're brought up. No, no, not the history. Go away. With a phrase like that, it makes you want to bring up the knife. And someone did mention in chat that we hadn't really examined it yet. Huh. The tip's broken. Oh, look here, Mr. Narhodo. Just at the tip. Phrasing. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right! Well spotted, Mr. Zotto. I wonder what could have happened to it. It's still lodged in her. That's why she's in the coma. Yes. Y you don't think it could still be lodged in the victim, do you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. Well, now that you've addressed it, clearly that didn't happen. <laughs> Alright, anything else on the knife? Alright, so what does that look like now? Uh, well, that's something, isn't it? Yeah, two and six. I'm surprised they didn't flip, but I feel like that statement's supposed to go against juror number two. So. Those two statements clearly have a deeply significant connection. Good grief, you mean they don't contradict each other? Count, explain, Council, at once. Juror number two, do you think perhaps that this could be one such novel alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternate, alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you trying to, what are you talking about? We've demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, was found at the scene of a crime. Originated in Mr. Garadeb's room on the top floor of, this ha of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object besides the book could have found its way from the Garadeb household to the street below. Eh, what's that now? After all, Mrs. Garadeb could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, juror number four? What are you insinuating now, you, you little bean pole? I'm beginning to think that ever since the true origins of the book came to light, perhaps she's had a feeling this might be what happened. Now listen here, you Eastern Gala! As the foreman of the jury, I demand a straight answer. You give us this yarn about some other object making its way out of the house, but what? What is it? What was it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. That was a bold accusation. That was a bold accusation to make. Boy, that's not a good sign, is it? The attorney can't say accusation, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. 
but I'm certain that at the very least this warrants further investigation. All right, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that found its way from the Garretov household to the scene of the crime was... The knife! Take that! June number four, Mrs. Garretov. What? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for the court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Uh. Good lord, counsel, what on earth are you doing? I'm going for the Hail Mary strategy of saying the murderer is in the jury. Or the attacker, in this case. That's the weapon that was lodged in the victim's back, man! My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garadev were in the throes of an argument. Mrs. Garadev was hurling anything she could at her husband, who'd been back up against the window. A window that had been opened to clear the smoke, through which a book sailed to land at the crime scene. You can't seriously believe that! The book was found in the victim's grasp! Are you saying that it flew out the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand? Huh, even my missus ain't got a name like that. Yes, I admit, there are many details we don't yet understand. But that's the point, that's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end, not right now! Oh my. <sighs> Mrs. Garadev, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Oh, uh, um, ah! She died. Okay, well that takes care of the biased juror. Who's saying my lord? Who's saying it? Oh, there we go. My lord, I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word after all. Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. Despite the fact the defense counsel, you know, just two days ago accused me of murder. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman! I'd have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment, either. All together now, ladies and gents! We... we did it! Oh, congratulations, Mr. Naruhoto! So, as a result of the defense's summation examination, a number of jurors' leanings have changed. Two jurors called guilty against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of this court is divided. And the trial will continue. Someone give Van Dyke another bottle to throw. Now then, Lord Van Zykes, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. I'm gonna throw that against the candles again. Like a corked wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. Damn it! But what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing to save the gutter! If, if I may, Lord Van Zax, the defense has just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happened. Credible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. Let me start by insisting. 
that you must all familiarize yourself better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What do you mean by that? What's his angle this time? It would already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Gerdeb household, there runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means the distance from the Gerardeb's house to the crime scene is, yes, 15 yards. Let me see, 15 yards? That's around 14 meters. 14 meters? That's a little farther than I imagined. And, as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted as having portentous significance, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book, vauntingly hurled by the lady of the house, traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. Is that your final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? Ah, um! And you did the jackknife follow the near-identical trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. Ah! She could have just leaned down to pick up the smoldering book and then got a knife in the back for the pleasure. There's nothing I can say to that. That... That prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. I mean, listen to it. Oh, Alucard. I mean, Von Zykes. Miss Suzato! Serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he! Um, maybe let's pick our battles here. My lord, might, be allow might I be allowed to speak? As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense. Yes, go ahead. The prosecution may consider the idea of fantasy. What the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end... Juror number four, Miss Joan Garadeb, must be called to testify and submit to cross-examination. Saints alive! The cross a cross-examination of a juror? Yes, Your Honor, it's so unbelievable that we should have stopped this trial ages ago. Order! 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 Well, this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. Usually we vet them better than this. Objection. And unnecessary. Lord, Lord Van Zykes. There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony to the fence may further cross-examine. If my learned friend's farcical theory has any truth in it then both a burning book and a jackknife must have flown through the sky before these couple's eyes. And we must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. What say you, witnesses? Oh god, I still have to get the voices right for these two. Yes, sir! Constable Rolly Beat reporting for duty, sir! Well, good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing until now, sir! I haven't slept for a month on account of my villain who's appeared on my beat, sir! Oh, they are so heroic, these London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more! Yeah, now he's Italian. <laughs> oh, Roly, my hero! You make me swoon!
Very well. I hereby reject the defense's request. Oh. And order the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir! This case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadev. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sap! The, win the window is on top floor of the Garadev house where top hinge seismics. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go fetch help, but my trusty Rolly was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sap! Nothing strange to report on that front, sap! All quiet on the fat lady's corpse, sir! Well, this is quite startling. Top hinged seismic windows. That detail was not in the police report, Constable. Ah, uh, yes, um, sorry about that. I, I must have been a little drowsy. Ahem. Uh -huh. You cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable! No, sir! Um, sorry, but... What exactly is a topped hinge seismic window? I keep saying seismic. It says casement, clearly. And you. You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Of course. Sorry. I found it, Mr. Naruhoto. In my book of literally everything. Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. 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 Yeah, Mr. And Mrs. Garadev's room. All right, I'll try. Ah, yes, my memory's coming to me now. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. But as a top hinge casement, casement. Why do I keep saying casement? Casement window. It swings open along the upper edge. You see. I'm glad you rectified your ignorance. A casement window's most prominent feature is its stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. It, it prevents it opening? This is all news to me. Absolutely correct, sir! In other words, if a book or knife were to have been thrown through the open window, It would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down to the pavement below. No! You'll see the problem then? Good. Your education in Windows is complete. There was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. Man, that, can't, that can't be! Ouch. Did you see that, Rolly? That young Japanese man colla just collapsed in agony. Yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, Rolly, you're so strong. Crushing foreigners. How is this happening? I haven't even started the cross-examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Counsel, if you would drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. My lord. Oh, good. Another desperate situation. Cross-examination. Ooh. Might as well just start pressing. How can you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble profounding principles of the force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed that us that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. That was yesterday. <laughs> 
to patrol the streets of London and uphold the peace of the common man. That's what the job's all about. And that's why I can stand here today along my long-suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word while rubbing my tired eyes at Midgley. Sir! Oh, Roly, you're so manly. Of course I am, darling, my darling Patricia. I not think he has the list because of the strap between his teeth. My pot! Oh, Roly! No, oh, brother. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadab? Oh, I see, sir! You should have said earlier, sir! Yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir! I'll answer it to the fullest of my ability, sir! There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes? I'm pressing one statement for all of this. I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London bobbies now and uphold now it's how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. To that end, so that, to that end, so to that, so to that end, ugh. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through without shredding a few tears. Shedding. I'll shred it. Thank you. I'll try. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. By which you mean you don't... They don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir! They're just there to allow a little bit of air through the house, you see? So they're restricted as to how much they can open. And therefore, anything thrown out the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes, directly opposite of the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. Would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge casement thing before? Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you even have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadip's house is furnished with? Ah, well, sir. That's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Do you have something to add, Miss Beat? Mrs. Beat? Hmm, sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering. That's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course, I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rolly's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh yes, that street, Briar Road. That's the boundary between Rolly's Beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Oh, he's asleep again. 
Constable Beat. Hmm? Oh, y yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping with interviewing the occupants of the Garadev household yesterday. The house is on my beat, you see, sir. Hmm, that really was cutting it close then. Constable, I wonder if you would clarify something. If the Garadev household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is, uh, next to it as well? Outside Mr. Garadev's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement is on the, on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of Briar Road, we would have never been able to go that far, go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a Bobby, after all. Extraordinary people are Bobbies, tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of rewarding my Rolly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? Insert commentary about Christianity here. That must be it, Pop, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on the record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narhodo. I'll take care of it immediately. The case file's information has been updated in the court record. And now it's my turn, I think. Alright. Just keep pressing, just keep pressing. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Oh, but Rolly and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking at our lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness! Can it, can it guide you to answer the question? It was a flaming book I had cut across the sky in front of us. It would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let Rolly be an inspector, I would have said, three times at least. Of course, what with the smog and everything, we did, couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir, that is correct, sir! As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir! Hmm, it certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to help her. Oh, that's not the press button, that is. Yes, you said that you were went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If it had been on Rilly's beach, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't really be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. So Rolly told me the way, only I, I sort of got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Oh, please. So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my Rolly was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir! Hold it. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir! I had my eyes open the entire time, never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. I can swear to that on the yard's on a sir! Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir? Strange, sir? Seems altogether regular for me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadev household. 
So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime at the, the entire time? Aha! Could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burned as well? Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping the book like that in her hand? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Wrong photographic print, but okay. Well, sir, that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how the knife ended up in her back and how that book ended up in her hand. Did... Oh my gosh. So we never established... Like, no, Natsume does not know where he was walking. Did it really happen right outside his house? And they just dragged him off his beat? That's some messed up shit. But I can, I can just see it happening. She's walking down the street. Flaming book falls down. She leans up, she goes to pick up the book, and then the knife hits the window and just slams into her back. That's how the knife got chipped when it hit the window. That's messed up. Well, let's keep this going. There must be a co some common thread between them. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Oh, um, no, you can't. You don't ask questions of attorneys, we ask questions of you. But, of course, Rianosuke, being a dope, says, Yes, of course, what is it? You're... you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell! What? I... I wasn't really... I mean... What's she doing? Please. Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm one my word, I am! I... really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses! I don't want to hear it! My voice will be heard! My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Miss Beat, I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that! That Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my roly won't. Duly... Noted, Miss Beat. Uh, Mrs. Beat, sorry. Sometimes I just don't believe you're married. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? Okay. Is that even the new testimony? I can't go backwards to check, so I guess press. Mrs. B, nobody's questioning you what you've told. Nobody's questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. <sighs> and I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I made a, arrangements to meet Roly. He gets ever so cross. It looks like he has something to say about that. Excuse me. Constable Beat, is there a problem? Eh, um, hmm. Uh, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I 
I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening is all. You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside ten minutes, but my darling he was gone for a good fifteen. Oh, Roly, you're such a tease. But the reason I was gone so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Roly's so romantic. He saved up for it with farthings and hay pennies he found in the gutter doing his rounds. So he just stole. <laughs> Abandoned property, I guess, but still. Yes, uh, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it till just now. Had you, I, uh, had you, my darling? Ah! Oh, mm, ah! Oh, yeah. But that was just between us. No talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise... Really? Oh! What was that all about? What was that all about? Read the lines right. Constable Beat looked obviously very troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid he can't offer any uh, offer any useful insight, Mr. Narhoto. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. I am so bored. Okay, and now... Where do we go from there? I'm just gonna keep mining away at this one testimony till we get something. You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right! I was so upset! But when we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back, I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Rolly gave me. It was quite dark where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice it at first. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on? Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all! Oh no! So it wasn't even her. Roly just moved it. Oh no! Roly, poly, oly, oh no, we. Ugh. In case you need reminding, Mrs. Beat, the victim was not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice call me to the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me, I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. Can't think of how it got there, I really can't. So the bouquet... Uh, really? You're not gonna think about that from the other side of the problem, Ryanosuke? Okay, well... Hopefully we hit that point before another hour passes. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. Hmm, <clears throat> curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose roll he bought me. What a change from the gut with the chain from the gutter he spent so long collecting. By bouquet, do you mean perhaps mean this sorry solitary rose? Oh! Oh, yes, yes, that's it! That's the bouquet Rolly bought me for our anniversary, with all bits of change he found in the gutter. Maybe just, maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Van Sykes, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadev house. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, yeah. So this was this didn't even happen on that side of Briar Road. Happened on the other side. Our original theory about the stuff happened, fell down, hit her in the back. Natsume freaked out, ran immediately inside. 
Not even apparently thinking that he was crossing the corner. Ugh. Natsume, you are a terrible defendant. Remember something next time. Yeah, and then Roly just moved moved the fat lady to get him off the to get her off the beat. <sighs> let's let's have fun with another 45 minutes trying to get to that conclusion. In front of the Garadev's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay there, the strip lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Yet, we confiscated it anyway? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you! Could I have back now, please? Hmm. No, I think for good measure this row should be added into the court record as evidence. Oh! But, it, it's a symbol of our love! Yeah, I want it back after the trial, do you hear me? I want it back! Good grief! R rest assured that I will do my very best not to forget, my very best not to forget, Mrs. Beat. Well, of course, that's dubious. So nothing strange happened, but allegedly this rose found its way to the other side of the street. Which I know is BS, but I think that's what you want. So... Objection. You claim, Constable Beat, that there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be! What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described, no doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, backed into the gutter where it belongs. Meager? Objection. But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? <clears throat> no one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me! There was nothing to do with the case! That's that's why Rolly didn't mention it, I'm sure! No, because sadly, it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, where Mr. Ge oh, there's Mr. Garadeb's book! Mr. Garadev's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the, uh, pane of the casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in front of Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's house. There's no logical explanation for those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them. Oh good, J Jones back up. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my role, he's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says? Wittering on about books and bouquets, why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh good, Mrs. Garadeb's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadeb. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Naruhodo. 
but the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! Tampering? You have barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would have poss who would have possibly had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? <sighs> yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Male Strongheart! No, no. It was actually Joan Garadab! No, no, no. It was really Rolly Beat! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly Beat, it was you! What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense! Why would my Rolly do anything like that? There's no one straighter than my husband! Phrasing. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London! Mrs. Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I mean, it was him! He did it! Objection. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it! Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Oh, well, well. Objection. First, you make accusations about the landlord and his wife. Now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right, he's right. But my husband and I just happen to be there, that's all. So why would have, we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Norhoto, have you, have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. Regardless of what happens in this courtroom, you will most likely be lynched outside the Bailey. But, for now, if you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide where the victim fell. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? Y you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Rye Road. We saw it happen, remember? It was right here. Just if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact... That isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? Yeah, I know, we're talking about motive now, but we never brought that up when Natsume's life was on the line. We seem to have just settled on foreigner, therefore evil. I'm beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Council. You and me both, Santa. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. There are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening. Here, let me blow your mind, Van Sykes. 
right here. But, but that's on the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadeb, Mr. Garadeb's book fell directly down from the open window above, and your bouquet, Mrs. B, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious! Objection. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony this court has heard. But the, these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was a typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And disturbing, and during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print. The victim herself. The four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the opposite, on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Van Sykes said it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lines cast no light. Yes, it couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position, on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rowley beat! He's asleep. Um, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to know off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, Rowley. It isn't true, is it? What the lawyer said is all lives, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know! I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything exposed. Only it seems it wasn't a dream after all. Good, good golly! Order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? It's almost Christmas! Oh, Rowley, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? <sighs> Wishing the victim dead should be one too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. London's calling. I don't know what, I don't know what I was going for there. I can't say, sir. What? That's not Santa. What? I'm really ever so sorry about this. For damaging the yard's reputation for for everything. I have a possible explanation. Hmm? <laughs> for why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Van Zykes, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. Da! Hiss! 
I believe it would be beneficial for the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you have better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think of a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. Well, it gives away the motive for the, con the Constable Beat's unthinkable actions. It can't be the Rose. Hold on. He's still on here as the reporting officer, even when it was allegedly not on his beat. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered on his beat, of the policeman must assist. Okay, there you go. Yeah. If it was if it was on his beat, he would have had to cancel his evening plans, which is why he moved them. There you go. And present. Take that. I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land. I've only just arrived. I've been, I only just arrived from Japan, which is why all this information about London's so-called bobbies is completely new to me. I've learnt that, though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet. I did... I... <sighs> I was going to present the bouquet, but I guess we're tying it anyway. Oh, yes. It was our very, our very first wedding anniversary. <sighs> Constable Beta worked hard to find it, to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. Then he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along the Raya Road. Then he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, on that particular day... This is a flashback. I, I'm not going to strain my voice anymore. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Constable Beat. Is that, or is that not, the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh! Exactly. To summarize, again, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal should be lurking, could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. Would God report this to the station as quickly as possible? But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what it meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the invest initial investigations and help detectives. 
Why here? Why does this have happened here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? It's a cop's job to go out the scene of the crime, so I told Pat she had to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak. It was it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the beat next to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police block that covers it. Run along Mearsham Street and then... Don't cry for this guy! I'm... I'm... I'm sorry. I'm... I'm so sorry. Oh, he, that now the strap comes out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, constable. I... I just wanted... I just wanted one night to take my Twish out for dinner. Oh, really? Just that one night. You'll know that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you'll decided to move that the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under a neighboring beat's care. You see, I, I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon! Oh, of course he did! Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement! Ah, I see your meaning now. But God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Rolly, that, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rowley. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from that one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um, four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. Three of them dropped at Mr. Natsume, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadev household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. Yep, nope, she bent over to pick up the book, and that's when the knife got her. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene... The victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You sure it was the book The Lion's Pride that the victim was holding? Oh yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Fourth book's information has been updated. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people off the scene. Me and, and Pat and me saw it happen. Well, however way, which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off and done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all over to the, over to the road would make a jolt of difference. I, I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. Execute this man! My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zykes? I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, 
You may withdraw. Yes, sir! Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Roly? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Uh, please, don't punish my husband. Th this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Call that lesson in your mind. Or I will burn you alive! And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Uh, uh never again, sir? Y you mean to say... Leave. Now. This trial is not yet over. Um, uh... Sir! Well, quite a startling re revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanted the entire scene of the crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, that the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is the only person who could possibly have committed this crime. Objection. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Van Sykes, is this true? Very well. Name the person if you will, and if further investigation is warranted, the prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. I... Guys, it's clearly male Strongheart. No, it's... I, I don't even understand why we've done this. We All we've done is just now said, okay, our original assertion that Joan was throwing things wildly and stuff went wrong is now possible. So, Joan, get off the jury box and get over to the witness box. And then don't get back on the jury box because you don't belong there. Take that. The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Miss, Mrs. Joan Gerdip. Me? Me? How dare he me? Objection. That request has already been denied. Objection. But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadev, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadev. In the course of the arrangement... Ugh. Argument, a minor house fire was ignited, and to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looked out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the opened hinge casement window, the book plummeted directly down, finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Ah! I don't recall it. 
Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there in that regalia said members of the jury needn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection. No, I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Oh! Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You're not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's just a card and garden knife! It could have been from anywhere. We have several like that at home. Or well, if, if one is missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying, please, Mrs. Garadib? Now you listen to me! I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I, I want evidence. I want, to, I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop! Do your worst! Um, well... Well, Mr. Narhoto. If I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Then take the stand, juror. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zykes. I... I'm going to have to testify? Juror number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of what of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh dearie me. So I demand oh wait, nope, that's the judge. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadet. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, Councils? Certainly, my lord. Oh, um... That's what I'm hoping for, my lord. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer! Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is John Garadeb, and I'm, um, well, I'm a juror, and such like. It sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid, or what anymore. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord! You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh dearie me! Oh, I think I can guess this voice. Chin up, Joni! Nothing to worry about now! Moon! Oh, I didn't know you were here, John! Wasn't you only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But, what about your knee, dear? Don't worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John. 
I presume you are Mr. John Garadeb? Yes, sirs! Former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Northumbrian Follister, sir! I've seen my fair share of action now, and now living the quiet life, as it were. The quiet life? Though you'll not engage in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question. Ah, well, yes, ahem, uh -huh, quite. I believe this may represent the first in the proud history of the British co uh, first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court <sighs> No, no. I passed by that too quickly. It's unprecedented because you're not supposed to have people involved in the case on the fucking witness stand. Santa, you should know better. <sighs> Kill me now. Ho, ho, ho. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your, in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once! Oh no, did I miss a sub bomb? Oh no! Lord Total, I'm sorry! Like I said, my freaking. Ah. Uh, hold on, are you auto playing this? Okay. Stop. Stop. Okay, thank you. No, 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 nah, no, I'm not! Ah! Uh, freaking thing. Hold on. Uh, history. There we go. Lord Total, thank you so much! Uh, let's see. How many. Okay, so when I scroll up on this, it does the same thing. There we go. Alright, well, thank you so much for the gift subs. Thank I hope everyone enjoys it to the team. Ooh, man, that's a lot. Was that like 20 of them? I, can, I, have, I have them used Streamlabs OS because I'm flipping between stuff on my phone. The work never stops. 20! Thank you! Okay, good. My guess was right. <laughs> but thank you so much, and for the 100 bits to tell me I'm good. Alright. Yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did uh, have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet! Soon had it out, though, and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could throw at him. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I noticed if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. If that bolly thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, she had a good job pro yeah, job proving it, I think. Hmm. It sounds as though there was quite a battlefield in your household that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we have been toast. Of course, a veteran such as myself. He's only too aware on that very- on every battlefield, you're just as a- you're just a gnat's whisker from death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well... I must say I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of the jack- of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows to such surroundings are barely noticed. Those witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a dead end. Ben Sykes may well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Narhoto, because for some reason, this reasonable doubt isn't enough. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Very well, Counsel. Begin your cross-examination. Battle of Garadab. 
Uh. Well, I mean, we do recall the reason. Is that is this is is this where we're gonna nail him to the board? Well, start pressing. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadev. A rather passionate note, in fact. But Mrs. Garadev found the note, discovering her husband's little secret. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What sordid state of affairs? Hell on earth. I say, when a chap just says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it up. And besides, half of it was the half of it was one of the mark anyway. A likely story. These waters run very deep. And what transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? Uh, that doesn't seem worth pressing. Okay, and obviously that's something I need to know more about. Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time, it was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw! That is most certainly not true of this of a Suzato takedown, Mr. Norhodo. How did she know I was thinking that? So please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I don't recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge. A napkin? Oh, hello. Yeah, wouldn't you have some memory of what was hitting you? Excuse me. Were domestic abuse laws a thing back then? Oh no, the wife was the property of the husband. Do you have something to add, sir? Mr. Garadev. Hmm? Eh, don't shout! Oh, sorry. Beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? Nothing of any significance, no. Just that barrage of projectile the old, the old thing launched in my direction. It was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and a fire poker, I seem to recall. Ouch. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I wish I... Hold on. <laughs> and the woman's aim is uncanny! She landed a direct hit with every bully... Ah! Good grief, woman! We're not at home now! It is the court of law! Oh, dearie me, I'm ever so sorry, dear. What is she even doing with a teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would have never thrown such things at you, obviously. Well, take a look at this, then. I would just suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir? Had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Want to clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. And when I went to pick, up, pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see your pipe was broken. You've never been sent flying unless it was hit by something perfect, pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bang the thing up for now. Ah, oh, you're the only one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Hmm, I wonder what we should make of this account. I mean, any, I, obviously we need evidence that hard stuff was being thrown, so yeah. The defense believes Mr. Garrett's remarks just now to be of great significance. 
This Vol veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife, and pipes, as well as hearts, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of, an ad of adding to formal the formal testimony. Indeed, common sense, one might say. Might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Mm, well, I don't see why not. Oh, dearie me, there you go again, trying to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Give me that pipe, give me that pipe, give me that pipe, give me that pipe. I sure hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Narcoto. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh no, it's fine. Thanks to Zara-san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. Sure, let's do that now. So we already know... Well, what do we know now? Let's look at the pipe. Oh, hello. What? 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 Garodab! What the flying hell? You've been smoking with this thing in here? I didn't expect it to be so pronounced. Well... Oh, just something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe there. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What? What's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It, it looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Surely it couldn't be... There's a small nick out of the bowl here. Look, it appears to have been made relatively recently. See how there are little scrapes and dents all over it? It's clearly a well loved pipe. Yeah, you're right. It seems to me recently that being well loved goes hand in hand with getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my eye, though, because it's clearly new. Well, that's some thorough examination. Well, thank you for that. Rebuttal, Mr. Garadeb. Now, if we could return to the crux of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Oh, wait a minute. So... Huh. Are we already suspecting... No, not that. Because now we know... Yeah, so now we know the tip of... Th is that anything more there? Yeah, the tip. Just the tip. Wait, part of it's missing? I could be wrong, but we've just got a... F but I've just got a feeling. You remember this? Ah, that's... That's the tiny fragment of metal that we found inside Mr. Garrett's pipe! Yeah, and just maybe... Oh my! It's a perfect fit! Somehow, I just knew it. So now, is the piece been re-identified? It's a perfect fit. Okay, there we go. So... So now we know it's that knife. Because it hit the pipe, and then hit the... Yeah, so... do which I, What do I present, though? Do I present the pipe, the jackknife, or the fragment of metal? Uh, well, let's start here. It's already highlighted. Objection. Let's just consider the implications of that statement for a moment, shall we? What implications, Council? Nothing strikes me about it. Uh, um, exactly! There's nothing striking about it! Uh, well, that's BS.
Well, when in doubt. Sorry, would you care to elaborate? Nothing to say, really. Rather partial to a spot of carving, you see. Pipes and whatnot, fishing tackle, you know, you know, that sort of thing. It's a passion we both share. I like to call little woman trinkets, too. And then there's my leather work. Sorry to say, we're always losing knives about the place. We have dozens of the things. They sell them at the market sometimes. Twenty for the price of nineteen. Needless to say, I stout them up. John prefers to use two knives at mealtimes, too, instead of a knife and fork. Now, now, Joan, you don't want people to think I'm sort of savage! Here we go again with the scaldings. Why are they being so evasive? I imagine it's because they don't want to believe it. They can't bear the thought that it might have been one of their knives that injured the victim. Which is entirely understandable, of course, but still. Go on with your testimony, witnesses. Sir! Oh, okay, no. He's asking for proof now. So let me go ahead and show you the proof I have. It's this. Objection. Oh, music cut out. Oh, hand slam. Mr. Garadeb, could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see a bally thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead-Eyed Deb back in the regiment, of course, but that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I still struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. Oh, he does. Dearie me, it's rather wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You mustn't D very dusty. What is that? A tiny scrap of metal. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And there the defense come by this evidence. It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadev's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got in there. And what precisely does this fra fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the matter of the stabbing abri on Briar Road? I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. Hmm, you appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, counsel. Very well, then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired with the fragment of metal, allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case? The knife. The knife! No! Take that! This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece of the, at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blades sold at the at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips le lodged in their victim's bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt it's still has suffered a similar faith, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection. No, that's not the case. Hmm? The tip of this particular knife's blade is in the very is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadep's pipe. Ah! Ugh! Good grief, Lord Van Zeitz! I I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good, good golly gosh. 
Order! 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 Is, is this some sort of England's Eastern sorcery? This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? So Van Sykes has figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once! Yes, my lord, the crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadev's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. Yeah, there you go. He said that. Yeah, hit it, knocked it out of his hands. That was the knife. Oh, dearie me. During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garadeb flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garadeb, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that is when, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadeb's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Uh. In short, this knife, which fell from the window of, of the Garadev's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Good gosh! Oh dear! Oh... Me! Oh my gosh, look at the back of his pants. <laughs> Mr. Garadeb's seat has been burned off. I didn't notice that. A full-blooded theory, I'll give you that. A full-bodied... <laughs> Full blood. Sorry, Floridian slip, everyone. A full bodied theory, I'll give you that. <clears throat> A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged in to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's carelistically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. A game theory! The bottle, I fear, is corked. Because you see... It's spilt by an insurmountable inconsistency! An insurmountable... WHAT?! Lord Van Sykes, explain yourself! What is this inconsistent you see you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Ah! That's right, you silly little man! Now, Joan, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. Let me go ahead and stop you there, Van Sykes. She was bending over to pick up the book. That's when the knife hit her. There you go. We don't even have to spend another 15 minutes on this. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above... There is no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. Yeah! Order! Order! Quite right, you see. That's exactly right. I had the knife. Had, if the knife had fallen on her from above, it would have struck her on top of her head. Well, um... You know, I think he's got a point. I love Van Sykes' accent. I don't know, but he keeps smashing the wine bottle against my face. 
Mm, it would appear the defense has made a rather spectacular blunder. If the theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Ah! You say that, and your whole- Oh my fucking god, well let's just go. Your theory, my learned friend, is history! We were so close, I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now the way has been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency. Or in other words... Oh, in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Miss Suzato! You mustn't worry, Mr. Norohoto. You were just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A tacit acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. This is in inconsistency doesn't mean... Well, okay, it means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test! I, I, missed, I missed part of that line. Can I get that back, please? This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. There. <laughs> yes! If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Counsel? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We, have al we already have the answer. Goodness! Utter, utter madness! Moon! Surely this must be the last time. Counsel, present the evidence of which you speak. This is the last inconsistency, the final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the falling knife became lodged in the victim's back is this fucking buck! God damn! This, the fourth book found at the scene! This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book? Is that not Mr. Garadeb's book? Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print, pr uh, the photographic print clearly shows the book in question and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all know now, it was the police constable that put the book between our fingers like that. Quite so. As this wholesale transplanted the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however. As part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. Yeah, no, the book was already in her hand. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even want to try doing Lo Roly's voice again. I'm glad he's gone. Do not make me do it again, game. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up in of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I was, should say so! After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd been doing much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? By... by Jingo! I... I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh dearie me. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Garadeb household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment, the young woman was walking along the street in a light fog. When all of a sudden... A book fell right in front of her. 
The book I threw! Yes, Mrs. Garadab. And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I... I really can't imagine it. But I, I suppose... She might have reached down... Like that and... And picked the book up. Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick up the, fall the fallen book up, what position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Stab, 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 stab. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book, quite the transition. The next object fell from the room above. The jackknife. Straight into the middle of her back. And at the same time, walking by chance directly behind Mrs. Gr Miss Green, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Well, I never! It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Oh! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no, saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never really, there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. Just like how my friend died. And that is the real truth behind this case. Another whoopsie daisy! Well, Mr. and Mrs. Garadab. The very first time you showed me that knife, I, I had my suspicions. I wonder if perhaps it might have been something like that. There there, old bean! Poor Miss Garadab. Mrs. Garadab even. They're probably filing for divorce soon. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but it was all my fault, wasn't it? I take full responsibility. Let my anger get, I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book and I threw the knife as well. John, dear. It's all right, I know. Moon. I'm ever so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry! And uh, cracked the foundation of the old Bailey. Lord Van Zykes, what news of Miss Garrett, Mrs. Garrett? She has been taken to the infirmary. It will appear that today's events have left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could have easily been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital that the victim was being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she'll regain consciousness soon. It's strange. We've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. Please don't go meet her! <sighs> How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Ah, um, yes! 
On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. We have been horrifically racist through this whole trial. Don't cancel us in your literature. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our br great British culture. <laughs> and have been repaid with immensurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. Such shallow breaths against such a large form. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to a life to life here. I I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog. Like they're haunting me. Poor Soseki san. His imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So what had happened? I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should have never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have called for help, for a doctor, for the police! Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. So really, we're all victims here! One could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. That fucking cat. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by this spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zykes and I... Lord, what? Fuck, fuck that guy. He did nothing. He did nothing but make it harder. And our long lawyer here from the East, whose name I don't even bother to remember... That chain has now been broken, and the spirit exercised. I hardly commend you both. Oh! Shut up. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord? In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As a foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion for like the third time. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't expect the woman next to me. <laughs> I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Sitting in for the old bean while well, she's out of action, you know, but I do. I know what her decision would be. No, no. No. Can I hit you harder than your wife has? I don't know, but I would. Does this mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work? Well, it's about time. Yeah, the sun is set. I say I have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? If they survive the night. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hear I hereby demand your final decisions. Hey, we'll at least be able to hear their interpretation of Mr. Garadep's voice. Mr. Foreman. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Nah. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Very well, Mr. Nososeki Natsume, I hereby pronounce you NOT GUILTY! Confetti for everybody! <laughs> Remember, the confetti and fireworks are diegetic. They comment on them. <laughs> and finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, Lord Sir! 
You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture, and you'll get a special present for Christmas. And may you never again be brought before me. Santa has spoken! Oh, yes, sir, of course. All in my life. I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm transported to tears. Thank you, Councils. Court is adjourned. Sweet, help sweep up some confetti on your way out. Three seventeen p.m. So juror number five will get to do some work today. Everybody wins! Yeah! Oh, locum! Wait, wait, you, you mean me? Of course! Is there another locum here? Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last, I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! You, you, you pretty much used jubilant twice. Hetty, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased, Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Locum, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely lawyer, locum lawyer! Um, yes? I mean, as I said before, I, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me laughing. Look at that little hunchback! Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But! Today, you, locum lawyer, gave my gloom the boot! You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all those battling British! You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth! And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed, Behold, the best barrister ever born! Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful antidote to account for my old friends back in Japan. A a an antidote? What's become of all my hard and is that what's become of all my hard work? Uh, ooh. I'm not even going to guess. Ah, oh, there you are, my dear fellows! I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you. I see I am here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh! The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Naruhoto, and I wish you the very best of luck. It's... it's just finished. What?! No! My haste has been in vain?! Ugh! It's... it's... you! Herlock Sholmes! Oh, have we met, sir? Um... This is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, oh, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom. Now, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. This is all your fault, Herlock Sholmes! You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm... You're never going to give you a piece of my mind! My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Ah! Had she been taken to hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh! But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human after all. Anyone could have been shaken by such an experience. So, Seki, damn! I... I do feel very badly about how I behaved.
Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. Ha 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 ha! Priceless! Oh, I am sorry, really. But... That was quite priceless. Poor Soseki-san. Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And it would seem, you were not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed! By the spirits, and... Now by the Reaper! Ah. Lord Van Zykes. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if all, even if you're found out guilty, you're still doomed! It... It won't be alright, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper appears... Tr if the Reaper... If, uh, if the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you! Hiya! Ow! With a perfectly executed Suzano takedown! Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Miss Suzato. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh! It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I, I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. Even that one Moriarty guy. Moriarty. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here and the city it has shaped. And I've come to realize it is my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. Yes, excuse me. His name is Mames Joyardi. That's so very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or, in perhaps less veil terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world, escape the terror of the Reaper's Curse? That's not it at all! The more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen a work on my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Soseki-san. Could be an interesting read. And what about Ms. Suzano and yourself, Mr. Naruhodo? Sorry, what about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustached compatriot? Mustached compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we returned and uh, arrived in London. And only now does it feel like we have finally found our feet. And you are accommodated with in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you could take my lodgings. Oh, the, the windowless room? Huh! Ah, but what it lacks in windows, it more than makes up for with a floor, a ceiling, and walls. Great. And of course, I'd be happy to leave behind the accursed evil spirit. Oh my, an evil spirit? Oh yes, it tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's, it's an infallible wake-up call. Well, we'll think about it, if that's all right. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Really? Well, the vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Though it is up in the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady at this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of? Oh, this is simply wonderful! What an honor to be invited to take lodgings in the great detective's office's attic. I'm... I'm too overcome for words. 
So suggesting we look elsewhere is out then. Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I I don't know what to say, but, but thank you. And yes. Wonderful. Then I'll go complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Matsume. It shan't take long. Somebody's happy. Locum. I... I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But Locum, we'll meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. If he doesn't burn to death in the carriage. And so, with Soseki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to be our, become our new home. 221B Baker Street. Breaker Street. Baker Street. Bye! Oh no, we're still going. Uh, let me go ahead and pull something up right now before I continue. I we are we must be close to the end, but I still want to still want to get something ready. Do 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 do. There we go. It's a storage loft. So this is to be our new office, yes. Our office? I rather like the sound of that. Yeah. Me too. It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only it's only a small step. But I like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Ooh. Well, aren't you a little dashing man? Ah, Mr. Sholmes. Uh, yes, thank you so much. It's the delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. I simply adore it. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. I hope everyone's hungry. I'm nearly time for dinner. We'll eat as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives. We have a lot to celebrate. Iris, you must let me help you. All right then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid. So, Mr. Naruhodo, how does it feel to be in a room with me without my jacket on? Oh, and to have your own office in the capital. It's very exciting, actually. I can't help wondering what adventures await us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. Premises. Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry? London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights casts the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? I mean, those dark nights definitely seem to be a problem. Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So 
So once again, Mr. Naruhoto. Welcome to London. <laughs> the rent sucks ass. <laughs> yep, that too. Of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Shulm so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came. To lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it. End. Yes, I would like you to save that progress for me, would you? Alright. One episode left until we finish the first game in the series. And then we have the next game in the series. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you guys for joining me. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, I should be back tomorrow. I do have a very busy day tomorrow, so I may be completely tired. But, uh, if you pop in at around 7 o'clock on Friday and don't see me streaming, go on about your business. <laughs> I may be streaming, but I also may not. But if I do, I'll actually be checking back in on the permadeath game of No Man's Sky that I set up last week. Felt like that was kind of a good casual thing for us to do together. Interact with chat, have some fun. But that's tomorrow. Uh, tonight, I think I'm going to send you guys over to somebody who's streaming right now. Uh, we got Zito doing some cart racing, but Nick is doing Deathloop. And I think Deathloop seems to be the new hotness. So I'm going to go ahead and punch you guys over to Nick. Not Raid X, just Raid. I ugh, The channel's already on there, Twitch. Come on, get with the picture. Alright, 10 seconds to vamp. Well, I hope everyone had a great night or great time zone wherever you live in. And I don't have anything else to say. I'm tired. Bye!